All across the globe, anime is a popular form of entertainment. As far as shows go, Escaflone was one of the most well-liked animes in Japan and the United States. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the series Escaflone. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you never miss another update. Let's get it! Now, Escaflone was created by Shoji Kawamori, famed for creating the 1982 space epic, Macross. Kawamori was Escaflone's principal writer and narrative supervisor, but not his director. Initially, Escaflone was conceived as a male-oriented manga by Yasuhiro Imagawa. The initial Escaflone manga serialized in Shonen Ace, well before the TV series, features Satomi, a morphing magical girl. Escaflone is the tale of this Japanese magical girl who was swept away to a mythical world where the earth and the moon are held together by magic. Now after the manga, an anime television series called Escaflone of the Heavens was directed by Kazuki Akane, which has a total of 26 episodes. As of April 2nd, 1996, it was being aired on TV Tokyo in Japan, and it lasted until September 24th of the same year. For newcomers to anime, Escaflone served as a great starting point. Escaflone was a historic anime export from the mid-1990s, alongside Evangelion and Ghost in the Shell, a huge video success in the United States and a huge TV sensation in Korea. Getting into the story of Escaflone, Escaflone starts with Hitomi Kanzaki, an average high school girl who has lost all significance in her life. Escaflone combines romance with fantasy. When she's at her lowest point, she wishes she could simply vanish into thin air, a desire that is realized when a strange guy suddenly appears and launches her into space. As soon as Atomi steps foot on the planet Gaia, she finds herself in a strange new world controlled by magic and swords. She comes to terms with the fact that she has power to affect change in this world. Now, let's get into the main characters and what actually happened to them throughout the story. The story begins with a teammate of Atomi's who pressures her to leave the track team since she was faster than her. As a result of leaving the squad, she falls into a deep depression. She wants to sleep all the time and simply fade away, believing she has no real purpose. Although, with her friend Yukari's support, Hitomi tells her to stop bothering her. As a result, Hitomi feels she should just melt away from everyone's consciousness. Vulcan hears her frustrated mood and brings her to Gaia, where she rises within Escaflone. Before she can get out of the cockpit, the Abaharaki Van shoots down the Black Dragon Clan ship. Van, Escaflone, and Hitomi all fall to the ground. Van carries Dragon Blood, which gives him the ability to fly, use psychic abilities, and pilot the dragon armor, Escaflone. Van has been lonely and alone since he was a little boy. He has a hard time getting along with other Abaharaki members. Despite this, he has a softer side that he hides from everyone. In the adjacent beast town of Adam, Van's wounds are treated by Hitomi's care. Van explains to Hitomi why Dune destroyed their nation and became the head of the Black Dragon Clan. While they are there, before Delandu can fight Torushina and rescue Hitomi from an illusion acting as Vulcan, Van rushes out to help. Dragon-like Escaflone flies up to the lair of Vulcan's archenemy. Delandu, like Van and Vulcan, is a half Dragon Clan member and has similar psychic abilities. Vulcan's Black Dragon Clan employs Delandu, who leads the Dragon Slayer. In order to see whether the all CD's dragon armor might be revived, he was tested using his mixed blood. Black Dragon Clan demolished Alan's homeland when he was 12 years old. He started a robber gang, which grew into a mercenary organization and ultimately the Abaharaki. Alan extends an invitation to Atomi to join them, pleading with her to provide them the protection of her wings as the wing goddess. As a result of her stress, she passes out and is dragged inside the caravan. As the leader of the Black Dragon Clan and Van's long-lost elder brother, Vulcan serves as the show's major villain. Because of an oracle's predictions, his family was devastated and his mother and father were killed. In his efforts to assassinate Van and Jujuka, Vulcan utilizes his psychic skills to communicate with them. Heavily influenced by Alan and formed of refugees from nations that were once decimated by the Black Dragon Clan, Malerna has joined the Abaharaki rebel organization. There is no record of where she was born or came from. 
Hatomi is informed by Malerna that she must have faith in Escaflone not to destroy the planet in order to stop the prophecy Dryden had given them. Obsessive Emperor Dornkin has spent his whole life seeking a method to influence this course of events. Despite the fact that he is eventually responsible for the ruin of all three nations, he is willing to pay any cost in order to achieve the world that he dreams of. He has good intentions in trying to establish an ideal life for the inhabitants of Gaia, but unfortunately, he wreaks destruction and goes about it the wrong way. Thus, the story of Escaflone unfolds. Now, I didn't jump into too many spoilers, so hopefully the anime isn't ruined for you and you still check this one out. But for those of you that have seen the anime, let me know what you think I missed or what I should have put in the video and comment down below your favorite part of this anime. That's all for today's video and thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you never miss another video. Until next time, peace!